It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's comparative mythology lesson, we're going to compare and contrast the miracles of Jesus Christ to the Greco-Roman period. Besides using the New Testament as a primary source, we're also going to use the book that's called Miracles and Greco-Roman Antiquity. This book was written down by Wendy Cotter, and I highly recommend this book. And those who are curious about this book, you can check out the main source in the link in the description box down below. Before we compare and contrast the various miracles to Jesus Christ, we need to first define what exactly is a miracle. That way, everybody's on the same page. A miracle is defined as a surprising and welcome event that's not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ was pretty much well known for healing the blind. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 31. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on son David. When he has gone indoors, the blind man came to him, and he asked him, Do you believe I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they reply. Then he touched their eyes, and according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. Now, according to the book, we have plenty and plenty of examples of blind people being healed by these gods. Abrasia from Atlas, blind of one eye. She came as a supplement to the god. She walked into the temple. She laughed at some of the cures as incredible and impossible that the lame and the blind should be healed by merely seeing a dream. In her dream, she had a vision. It seemed to her that the god stood by her and said he will cure her, but in payment, he will ask her to dedicate to the temple a silver pig as a memorial of her ignorance. After saying this, he cut out the diseased eyeball and poured some drug. When day came, she walked out sound. A man came as a supplement to the god. He was so blind that one of his eyes, he only had the eyelid left. Within them was nothing, but they were entirely empty. Some of those in the temples laugh at his silliness to think that he could recover his sight with one of his eyes when not even a trace of the ball, but only the socket. He had a vision appear to him. It seemed to him that the god poured some drug, then opening his eyelids, poured into them. When day came, he departed with the sight of both eyes restored. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26, it says, They came to Bastada, and some people bought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by hand and led him outside the village. When he spit in the man's eyes to put his hand on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like street walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Sensation in any number limb is restored by spitting into the bosom or the upper eyelids were touched with saliva. One of the other aspects that Jesus Christ did in the New Testament was heal paralyzed people. Jesus was still teaching when four people came up, carrying a man on a mat because he could not walk. But because of the crowd, they could not get to him to Jesus. So they made a hole in the roof above him and let the man down in front of everybody. When Jesus saw how much faith he had, he said to the man, My friend, your sins are forgiven. Some of the teachers of the Law of Moses were sitting there. They start wondering, Why would he say such a thing? He must think he is God. Only God could forgive sins. At once, Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he said, Why are you talking such things? Is it easy for me to tell this man his sins are forgiven? or to tell him to get up and pick his mat and go on home. I will show you that I am the Son of Man who has the right to forgive sins here on earth. So Jesus said to the man, Get up, pick up your mat, and go on home. The man got up, he picked up his mat, and went out his way while everyone watched in amazement. Now let's compare it to this story right here. 
He happened to be paralyzed in his knees. While sleeping in the temple, he saw a dream. It seemed to him that the God ordered his servants to lift him up and to carry him outside and to lay him down in the front of the temple. After they had him outside, the God yoked his horses to a chariot and drove three times around in a circle and trampled on him with the horses and he got control over his knees instantly. According to the book of Matthew, it seems as though that after Jesus died on the cross, a lot of dead people came back to life. They came out the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went to the holy city and appeared to many people. Now according to the legends, Acrepius was killed by Zeus for bringing the dead back to life. Let your ancestor Acrepius be a warning to you and that he was recorded with a thunderbolt for saving humankind. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18, Jesus allegedly said, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will be placing their hand on sick people, and they will get well. Persons possessed of powers of witchcraft and of the evil eye, along with many particular characteristics of animals I have spoken of, when dealing with the marvels of the nations, it is sufficient for us to go over the ground again. A certain man, the whole body for benevolence, for example, the members of those families that frighten serpents. These, by a mere touch or by wet solution, relieve the bitten victims. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some of it out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that has been turned into wine. He did not realize where it came from, though the servant who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bride groom and saw it and said, Everyone bring out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine as the guests had had too much to drink, but yet to save the best until now. It is accredited by Mucianus, who was three times counseled that the water flowing from the spring in the temple of the father Liber, Dionysus on the island, always had the flavor of wine on Jimmy the fifth. The day is called God's gift day. One final example is that Jesus Christ had the ability to walk on water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the winds because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried in fear. I myself was formerly more incredulous than you in regards to such things, wonders, for I thought there was no way possible that they could have happened. But when I saw the foreign stranger fly, he came down on the land of Hyperius, he said, I believe, and he was conquered after the long residence. What was I going to do when I saw him stroll through the air in broad daylight and walk on water and go through the fire shortly on foot? Before I end this video, I want to state that this video is not saying that there is no such thing as a Jesus Christ. It is a consensus among scholars that there was probably a guy named Jesus Christ that probably exists in his lifetime, and so I'm not actually debating about whether or not a historical Jesus exists or not exists. What I'm trying to say in the video is that there are various elements from ancient Greek society that have miracles that are very similar to Jesus as described in the New Testament. Again, the Jesus of the New Testament is different than a historical Jesus. Think about this for one minute. It seems as though, because the writers were not eyewitnesses and wrote entirely in Greek, that kind of tells me that the writers of the Gospels for Jesus Christ were actually high-class people that received well education and because of that, they have exposure to various elements of miracles throughout their societies. And so it's entirely possible, when they were actually writing on the Gospels, that they borrow elements from different parts of their culture to contribute to Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Although not every single comparison is like 100% true to the Gospels, the similarities are quite there. 
But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.